Hey guys, it's Nate, aka The Foot Accountant. Welcome back to the channel. There's been a trend forming on this market for a matter of months, but it's now a clear apparent thing that EA has decided. They do not want us making coins from this particular part of the market, guys. Even with two massive SBCs that dropped yesterday, one massive in size because of how many squads are required, and the other just hype, these prices barely went up. And it's one of the first times they have gone up at all, in a while. I want to talk about that part of the market today and why it's a shame that EA is trying to take away one of the best ways to trade and make coins on this game that almost everybody does. Then we got to look at all the other content with Golazo SBCs yesterday and what's coming today on a Monday to start off the week of our Ultimate Team journeys. If you're excited for it, drop a thumbs up and subscribe if you're new. Let's talk about yesterday's content in terms of the SBCs first. It was okay of a day yesterday. It was all in SBCs, basically. First off, we had a bit of a, I guess, an SBC we didn't expect. The Pundit Pick SBC for Miguel Gutierrez, left back from Girona. Whipped Pass Plus, Quick Step Plus, 80 Physical. In April, hello, welcome to April, April 1st. This is not an April Fool's video. This is for real, no jokes here. Um, maybe this SBC is a joke, I don't know. I mean, this SBC doesn't look that great. I mean, it is cheap, it's 29,000 coins, so I guess we can't complain because it is cheap. Um, it's just not a card I don't think too many of us are going to want to do. So that was first SBC that dropped yesterday. Also, one thing to actually kind of keep an eye on heading into today on Monday is will EA mess up the content drop times? Because a couple things came out yesterday two hours early or one hour early uh, and then the rest of the content dropped at 6 p.m. Again, always some kind of give and go mistakes with the time change and clocks moving forward whenever that happens across the world. Now, yesterday we did have a massive SBC. This is the one that's big in size that we mentioned in the intro. Mia Hamm, her SBC finally dropped. Five star, five star. We know the card that we're getting here. 16 squads. I don't know if I really like how EA went about this. They wanted to get to their price that they thought was right for this Mia Hamm, right? Which, indeed, it was even more expensive than we thought it was going to be. Guys, this Mia Hamm SBC is coming in at 2.2 million. It is a little bit more than I would have liked to see. I mean, 2 million would have been still a lot, but okay to work on over time. 2.2 mil, when you look at it from a coin standpoint amount, seems like a lot. Of course, yes, her card has been 3 million coins, like we talked about, for a majority of the year. So in that sense, it doesn't seem too bad, but only one play style plus, you know, maybe pulls a little bit away from the card. This is still an SBC a lot of people are going to be crafting. I'm going to be doing this SBC over time. I don't think I'm going to rush to do it. I'd rather get out of the way and Rafa Marquez because I have not completed those two just yet. I'm a little behind from the weekend, um, but this is one that I will be doing just because it is Mia Ham, And I feel like a lot of people are interested in that too of just crafting this over time, but it's kind of obvious here that EA with 16 squads being required, they could have, I mean, opted for more 90 rated squads, but what they tried to do is spread it out over the 87s and the 88s. There's like how many 88 rated squads? Four 88 rated squads. You've got four 89s and then two 90s. It's like they tried to spread it out in that middle to high tier instead of just going like four 90 overall squads and then taking off like... 388s or something like, you know what I'm saying? I think that's just an interesting way to look at it for how they released this SBC. Again, it is expensive, and this will probably turn a lot of people away from doing it. I like this breakdown from FootWiz. This was actually pretty interesting. Um, you just kind of puts into perspective how many players you need at each rating to get this SBC done. You need 40 88 rated cards and 34 89s. Over time, that's definitely possible. Think about all the players you're going to get from just crafting. I mean, promo players right now, if you pack a fodder promo card from like the Golazo team, you're looking at a high rated card too. Like, you know, 91 rated Francescoli, 90s, 90s and 89s. So that definitely helps out your fodder chase as well. Actually, when you look at it this way, I think it's like, wow, that's, that's really expensive. I don't want to put all that in for this Mia Ham card. But the fact that we have so many fodder packs ever, which we're going to talk about today too, the whole point the video is about fodder right and SBCs um, it is doable it's just probably one for me that's going to be kind of placed on the back burner just because it's good but I don't think I need it right now it's just one that I want to have in the club a card I would love to use maybe I'll do the loan version first try out for a few games um, and yeah the price does seem too much I agree but also again with the craftability of the menus and the grind ability and everything it is doable. So that's the Mia Ham SBC. It finally dropped and it was expensive, kind of as we were talking about and looking forward to it being or 
not like wanting it to be expensive, but just like expecting it to be there. Now let's talk about the other SBCs. We had an 86 plus Encore Hero upgrade. And as expected, the Encore Hero upgrade unlimited repeatable is just not as good as the Encore Icon. It's just not, guys. There's base heroes in this. Yes, there's fantasies as well, but it's two squads, an 83 with an inform and an 86. No, like I don't think I'm going to do this SBC even one time throughout the two weeks that it is out. I just no, like no thanks. Um, unless there's a reason for me to try to go after this if I want to put somebody into an Evo or something, maybe. But for right there, face value, no thanks. Now the Icon player pick, on the other hand, this one is a little more interesting. EA loves these same requirements. 87, 87 with an inform, and 88. I think all the same Icon SBCs have been the exact same requirements over the past player picks that have been released now of course this one does include the future star icons like that dino and some of the other ones zidane zico and all that they are inside of this i haven't actually seen any of these open but i can't imagine that the future star icons are very packable winter wild cards and team of the year though and thunder shuck being in there too this is definitely a hyped player pick to craft 74 percent upvoted again guys and 87, 87, and 88 rated squads. Yeah, it's going to take a little bit of work to get done, but it's not that terrible, especially with high rated fodder, like the promo cards that are in packs. We're going to call those high rated fodder the little bro and little sis cards that are a part of this Golasso promo that I'm sure we're going to be hitting from player picks and 83 times 10s here in the next couple of days. That's going to help you get an SBC like this done. It is definitely craftable, right? Now, with these SBCs, the point of today's video is we're talking about fodder. And I want to have a conversation. I even mentioned it really quickly in yesterday's video, which kind of gave me the idea of rolling it forward into today, guys. Talking about fodder and not just informs. I want to do a quick inform check. How much? These were 31K last night. Now they're 29. So since we didn't have anything crazy with like the Encore icon being re-released, it was the Encore hero, not a lot of hype. Those really didn't go up. Same thing with the icon player pick. But guys, I think EA's destroyed fodder. Since team of the year, fodder has really gone nothing, gone nothing but down. Like it just drops. Almost every single time I look at the 88s and the 89s and the 90s and 91s, it just seems like it's going down. And I'm saying this on a day after fodder actually went up. But even yesterday when we were talking about it in the video, I was like, guys, they're dropping potentially a Mia Ham, potentially a big icon player pick. But I don't feel confident enough to invest in fodder because fodder barely ever moves anymore in this game specifically on the high tier. It does have a few movements here or there, but fodder, this is the big picture. Fodder has changed, okay? And investing in fodder has changed. It used to be like every time, I remember around team of the year and a couple of these questions, uh, maybe even like spring break time when there's days off school and times where people are going and taking vacations, the popular investment was, hey, just go send all your coins into a specific rating of fodder. And, you know, when you come back, it'll probably be inflated because, you know, fodder would just do that, right? You could buy fodder and then you could just wait for it to rise and let it rise and then sell it. And man, this year, it's just not the same. It's only best for like those quick, short weekly trades. Like if you bought fodder yesterday, if you bought 88s, like the Bernardo Silva that we were just looking at uh, was 13, 14,000 coins. If you, if you picked up any 88s there, I mean, yeah, you're loving it. They're up to 17,000 coins right now and you're making a nice bit of profit. But like I would sell because I don't expect those prices to maintain a higher value, not with what EA has done and the reason why fodder is so in the mud and not as good of, a, of an investing kind of vehicle as it used to be before. Guys, it's the store packs and all the objective and SBC packs that EA are giving out. Guys, we talk about this all the time, but the menus are more craftable than they've ever been. If you want to put in a little bit of work, it's very easy to get a lot of fodder. And not to mention the fact that the people that don't want to put in work, all they have to do is go to the store and open a 650K pack or 3,500 FC point pack and get 60 players that are 85 or above, one guaranteed to be 90 or higher. Like, why do you have to go buy fodder off the market when you can open this pack and finish like three squads of any SBC that you would want to do? You know what I'm saying? I think that means there's less fodder demand on the market and there's more supply to people's clubs untradeable. Fodder has just been given out in this game, especially in the second half of the year. Here, now let's talk about SBCs and objectives, where the fodder is coming from every single week. We talk about SBCs we get on Saturdays now. Every single Saturday, we're getting an 83 times 10, an 84 times 5, or an 82 times 20. 
Again, it's so easy. You collect an 87 or an 88 rated card from one of these 83 times 10s. Yeah, sure, you can put it into exchange and then go do more player picks to try to get more fodder. Or boom, you just got a high rated card that you can go and then maybe put into one of these SBCs that you're trying to do. And oh yeah, let's not forget to mention the fact that Division Rivals Rewards are giving out 87 times fours. Objectives for playing a cup mode are giving out 87 times fours as well, right? Pretty sure the Golasso Cup is an 87 times four overall reward. And then inside of it, you've got 84 threes, 85 twos, 82 twenties. You're gonna get so many walkouts from just opening the cup rewards, which is for winning eight games and playing 10. like crazy it is crazy how accessible fodder is this year and all that does the fact that ea is giving it out more and more and more means that less and less people are going to the market to buy these cards look at 89 rated the price of ruben diaz since team of the year during team of the year right the hype was crazy everybody was opening packs fodder went bananas right before team of the year 89s had never gone below really 30,000 coins. There was one day here where they went down below 30,000 coins in late December, literally the turn of the year into 2024, 29,000 coins for Ruben Diaz. Those cards never saw uh, below 30K, but I mean, bar the beginning of the game, right? We kind of forget about the first couple of weeks because fodder is really low anyway when EA don't release SBCs yet to require high rated fodder until, you know, later on in that first month of the game. But 30K was the lowest these guys went until about a month ago. And again, it's been since team of the year that we've really seen things change on fodder. Even earlier on in the year, look at this. You could buy Ruben Diaz down here in November, 34,000 coins. He went to 38K. That's not even that big of a swing. Yeah, sure, they went down to 30,000 and then up to 36 and then ballooned during team of the year. But I remember after team of the year seeing fodder, like these 89s go from 43,000 all the way down to 30,000 coins. And we were like, oh my gosh, that's the, like the cheapest that they've been since the end of the year. They're going to go back up to the high 30s, right? No, they never did. They went down to 27K. I actually invested, I don't know if you guys remember me, investing in a bunch of 89s for 28 to 20, 27 to 28,000 coins before I went on holiday, right? They went up to 32K. I didn't even sell all of them there. And then they, just, they went back down. And then in the past couple of weeks these cards have gone crazy low 89s were 21,000 coins 21,000 coins on saturday before the sbcs came out um on sunday for me a ham and for the icon pick guys fodder especially on the top tier is just not as good to invest in anymore because of the way that this game is being played out and it looks like nothing is going to change in that regard in terms of being able to get the fodder which again i'm not complaining about I'm saying it's great for content and it's great for crafting if you want to put the work in on the SBCs and the menus, but it's not great for making the coins, right? Let me just show you a graph, okay? This is Ruben Diaz's graph from this year, right? You've got a couple of fluctuations here there, but the fluctuations are like 38K right here down to 36, up to 38, down to 36. There's not a lot of profit in that, right? And of course, you have some big swings here or there, but there's not a lot of movement. Let me show you FIFA 22. This is 89 rated Allison. Look at this, like every single week, you buy him on Tuesday, or you buy him on Thursday, 34K, bang, 43,000 coins. You know, even in some of these weeks right here, you go 38K up to 45. That's a fodder investment I would be down for. I'm not gonna buy an 89 for 36K and then sell it for 38. You're making 500 coins per card. Would I buy a, an 89 for 36 and then sell it for 45? Like four days later, heck yeah. That used to happen all the time in the older versions of this game. It was really last year in FIFA 23 where the fodder fluctuations were not happening as much on the middle of the higher tier. And this year it is even worse. And it's more accentuated because we just have so many more packs, so many more SBCs and objectives and the rewards that just give out so much more. But at the same time, we're also kind of it's a double-edged sword, guys, because you go to the icons and you wonder why Mia Ham is 2.2 million coins when her card on the market's 1.6 now, right? Because EA know they're giving out so much fodder, they can make these SBCs seem a little more expensive because they know how much they're giving out, so they increase the prices and they require more in a lot of these SBCs that they do put out. So. That's one thing I just had to mention, guys, because uh, the fodder is really not as good of a coin making machine as it has been in previous years. Like I've invested in fodder one time this year. I mean, some of the fodder that I'm looking at right now seems really low, but like I'm also thinking what's going to make it go up with everything that we have right now supply wise and 
We have so many SBCs that are out right now, guys. It, in a, every other year of this game, in another year of this game, if we had this many icon SBCs like Ham, Roberto Carlos, Socrates, you know, Makalele, Ribery, uh, Haji, the one that I did, like, fodder would be to the freaking moon. But there's so much supply, it doesn't just go up as much because everybody can get fodder in other ways and they don't have to spend the coins on it. Now, there is some part of the fodder market that is a lot more consistent. It's the middle of the lower tier. 85s this year. You look since January, since team of the year, John Stones went from 4K to 8 Back down to 4K, up to 6, basically 7. Down to 4K, up to 7. And here we are with 85s being 3,500. This is the this is the lowest they've been in a hot minute. Like, this is real low for 85s. So if you do want to make a long-term fodder investment play, I think 85s look fantastic. Maybe 86s as well. I mean, under 6K for these seems really, really cheap. But the question is, what's going to make them go up? The answer is, we just got to wait and see what EA drops, right? During team of the season, fodder's probably going to go up uh, somehow. Usually during the team of the season, high-rated fodder drops and the low-rated moves up a little bit because team of the season brings a bunch of high rated cards um but i would have to imagine that before we get into actual team of the season which we are in team of the season month now because it is april we will be getting tots sometime during this month which is awesome to think about but also insane at the same time uh some of those cards will have to move up beforehand it always happens or during team of the season it always happens that fodder goes up during those big promos with whatever comes out however they do it but as of right now, it just looks crazy low. So I would say if you're going to trade with fodder, the best way to do it is to just invest overall on like a long-term low when you see really consistent movement on these lower to middle tier cards like the 84s, 5s, and 6s. I think there's been better fodder movements there this year than there have been on the 87 pluses. Now, again, we've seen movements on the 91s. Like last week, 91s moved very well. But yesterday, 40K to 44, but right now, 41 like, how high is De Bruyne actually going to go when there's just more and more 91 rated cards that keep popping up onto this game as more supply? And just wait until Tots. There's going to be even more. You know what I'm saying? So, like, fodder investing used to be one of the ways to make a ton, a ton of coins in this game. And I know that a ton of people, probably some of you guys watching this video, have made a lot of coins on fodder as well this year. But right now, in this stage of the game, where we are in April and where we've been since Team of the Year, fodder has not been the best way to make coins and i'm this i am obviously biased a little bit because i like to make coins through flipping cards and trading with cards it's the most fun way in my opinion to make the coins um but like it used to be so easy to make coins with fodder and that has just changed informs were really good earlier on in the year uh there was times where they go up and down but recently it's been pretty flat right two weeks ago with the icon Encore, they went crazy, but I don't think informs are going to go crazy again unless something big changes. So in reality, what EA is doing here, guys, is they're just making it harder for us to make coins, which is kind of what they want it to be. If you think about it, right? EA wants it harder to make coins so that maybe you go into the store and you buy more of those FC points instead of actually working the market to try to get coins, right? If you're lacking coins and you need them, you're going to put on FC points, right? That's what they want. But that's why we talk about what we talk about here. Working the market, being smart, staying ahead of things so that you can lose less coins during the year and make coins so you don't have to do that if you don't want to. So I just had a conversation about fodder. I was, I could feel it coming out inside of me, bro. I just knew that it was coming. Like it, fodder this year is just different. It's just different. And it's just evident by all the store packs and all the objective packs and everything. So I knew that that conversation was coming, but it's just obvious looking at the market that things are not what they used to be in terms of the fodder. Now let's get into today's Monday content. Um, actually by looking back at some of the games that have finished up this weekend, these upgrades are not today, but, um, some of the last fantasy FC upgrades, and there were some clutch performers for rich. I didn't even know he was still alive. One of the best SBCs of this promo. He's going to 92 rated. Um, he got, I think, that 11th goal that they needed. That's a crazy looking card. If you still have that one, that's a budget beast. Usman Dembele pulled it off. If any of you guys were following this card, it was do or die for Usman. I can't believe he actually did it. Like, he went all out. He went from 91 rated. He's going to 94. That's crazy, man. He was 3.8 milli. Now he's 4.3. And there's one card to, uh, to 4.5. So 100% with all these cards, selling the hype. Um, if any of you guys were Konate owners, 
selling in the hype was 100% the play too, because he's like, what, 100K now? Or 95,000 coins? I'm pretty sure a couple days ago, he was like 180 or 90 or something like that. So he's down bad. I think Rafa Marquez probably hurt his price too. I didn't watch him that close over the weekend. But those upgrades are coming on Wednesday, and there are some nice upgrades coming out there. Now, for the rest of the Golasso cards on the market, and in terms of Monday content today, Mondays have been pretty slow days. I think that's going to continue today as well. I don't even think we're going to get UEFA marquee matchups today to really supply any of these cards. Of course, you got the Golasso Flash Challenge. I think I don't think there's any um, Champions League games this week. We've got midweek league games, midweek Prem on Tuesday. That'll be very interesting to watch, but I don't think that's going to bring out another set of UEFA uh, marquee matchups unless there's Women's Champions League, which I don't. There was last week. I don't think there is. I have to check the schedule. I didn't check that, but I don't think there is any more wins Champions League for at least a couple of weeks, and there's not any men's Champions League or Europa competitions either. So it really just might be a quiet Monday today. The biggest question I have is what's going to happen to our player pick? We've been in a vicious cycle, right? 80 plus player pick. Then the 81 plus comes out. Probably the 81 plus is going to replace our favorite 80 plus, which I love this 80 plus player pick because um, yes, it's one rating lower, but you get only, you only have to turn in six players, and I freaking love that. So this is going away today. I would imagine that the 81 plus does come back. Since they didn't get rid of the um, 83 times 10 or anything like that, I think this is going to come back, guys. So watch out for that today. And I'm really wondering if it's going to be a slower week. Like, I know we had Marquez, Alawayrin, Mia Hamm, Crazy Evo. A bunch went on this weekend. But I think it's going to slow down a little bit today. Just got to feeling that it's going to slow down a bit. EA has not been leaking too much. There's, I don't think there's any leaks right now as I scroll through Twitter X and, and look around a little bit. I don't think there's any leaks. Uh, so it could be a slower day on the market if that's the case. And if that is the case, it actually might be a decent time to be out trading cards because there's still weak in league demand. And of course, there is demand for those lower tier cards that are in the cup. Again, remember those 89 rated cards that do fit the cup. Um, here's a card off the top of the dome that I'm remembering that went up a lot during the weekend, Dudek. Uh, Dudek went up a lot on Friday for the cup. Yeah, he went from like 71K to 80, 85K. And he's been, wow, tanking. What the world? From 76K down to 59,000 coins. I have to imagine that maybe the hero, the encore hero being out has affected him a little bit. And then also maybe people selling him off for the cup as well. So maybe try to trade with a few of those players. But I'm looking out of packs, guys. Fantasy cards, foot birthday, foot birthday icons. The market's probably completed most of its like panic sell from over the weekend. I'm even looking just quickly at a couple foot birthday cards. Yesterday, we were looking at Militao at 500K. Bros 580. Um, who else? Benzema. Benzema was 500k for the the looking right version, which is the weak foot version, right? He's back to 580. So there's good flips and good trades to be had out there. I think a lot of your panic has subsided. So if you want to try to find a card that's rare that you might be able to trade with, now is going to be a very, very good time to do that as well. And of course, with the cup, with all the gameplay grind that is out there with Evos and all of that, not a bad time to be grinding the game in that sense as well well and with the player picks and the 83 times 10 at the very least log on and get those done every single day because it's worth it it's worth it for the 83 times 10s they take a couple minutes you never know what you might get with icons and heroes and packs yeah it's definitely worth it man so we'll see if ea drop any surprises on us today i don't know if i'm going to trade with too much i don't think the golasso cards will go up too much today maybe just a little bit so we'll be keeping an eye on them um but I wouldn't think they're going to go that crazy just because Mondays haven't been that great for the market, especially with all the content that's out right now. I'm not expecting things to balloon or anything like that today. Today's going to be a good day to be crafting SBCs, doing the cup, and uh, just see if anything surprising drops on a Monday today. If you're excited for uh, Monday content or honestly, I want to hear your thoughts down below in the comments about fodder. Like, I mean, yes, fodder has made people a ton of coins this year, but I feel like it's been in specific increments, not consistently every week or every two weeks. You hear about a fodder trade making four to five K a card, which is kind of where you need it to be on the 88s and above. It just doesn't move as much, man. And I think that's just the state of the game and the way the EA are doing it this year, which I don't know if I 100% agree with. Like, yes, the content's insane, but as we kind of have kind of just felt this whole year out. I think we're going to have some really interesting conversations towards the middle to end of the year, especially with how team of the season is going to go with all this content here. Team of the season might be crazy in, in a good way, but also like in a very interesting way as well. So let me know your thoughts on that down below in the comments. But uh, yeah, have a great week, guys. Good start to the Monday. 
Uh, and I will see you in the Twitch stream today. If you enjoyed the vid, drop a thumbs up on it and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I will see you guys in the Twitch stream today, man. Catch you later. Peace. Out.